Section. Introduction. We're focusing on creating algorithms that can classify images within complex visual categories, a process known as image recognition. This is a fundamental task in machine learning. However, most models need these categories to be predefined and fully specified, and they can't construct them automatically from data. The ability to build a category is not only desirable in many applications, but is also considered a core aspect of human cognition. The task of constructing a category is best exemplified by the Generalized Category Discovery GCD, problem. Here, we have a dataset of images that are only partially labeled, and the goal is to label all remaining images, using categories that occur in the labeled subset, or by identifying new ones. For example, in a supermarket, given only labels for spaghetti and penne pasta products, a model must understand the concept of pasta shape well enough to generalize to macaroni and fusilli. It must not group new images based on, for instance, the color of the packaging, even though the latter also yields a valid, but different, category. GCD is related to self-supervised learning and unsupervised clustering, which can discover some meaningful categories automatically. However, these cannot solve the GCD problem, which requires recovering any of the different and incompatible categories that apply to the same data. Instead, the key to GCD is in extrapolating a category which is only partially known. In this paper, our goal is to better understand the GCD problem and improve algorithms' performance. To this end, we first introduce the CLEVR4 dataset. CLEVR4 is a synthetic dataset where each image is fully parameterized by a set of four attributes, and where each attribute defines an equally valid grouping of the data. CLEVR4 extends the original CLEVR dataset by introducing new shapes, colors and textures, as well as allowing different object counts to be present in the image. Using these four attributes, the same set of images can be grouped according to four statistically independent categories. This feature sets it apart from most existing GCD benchmarks, which only contain sufficient annotations to evaluate a single grouping of the data. CLEVR4 allows us to probe large pre-trained models for biases, i.e., for their preference to emphasize a particular aspect of images, such as color or texture, which influences which category can be learned. For instance, contrary to findings from Garrow's et al., we find almost every large model exhibits a strong shape bias. Specifically, we find unsupervised clustering, even with very strong representations like Dino and Clip, fails on many splits of CLEVR4 despite CLEVR being considered a toy problem in other contexts. As a result, we find that different pre-trained models yield different performance traits across CLEVR4 when used as initialization for category discovery. We further use CLEVR4 to characterize the weaknesses of existing category discovery methods, namely, the harms of jointly training feature space and classifier losses, as well as insufficiently robust pseudo-labeling strategies for new classes. Next. We leverage our findings on CLEVR4 to develop a simple but effective method for GCD. Since category discovery has substantial overlap with self-supervised learning, we identify elements of these methods that are also beneficial for GCD. In particular, mean teacher-based algorithms have been very effective in representation learning, and we show that they can boost GCD performance as well. Here, a teacher model provides supervision through pseudo-labels, and is maintained as the moving average of the model being trained, the student. The slowly updated teacher is less affected by the noisy pseudo-labels which it produces, allowing clean pseudo-labels to be produced for new categories. Our proposed method, mean GCD, extends the existing state-of-the-art, substantially outperforming it on CLEVR4. Finally, we compare mean GCD against prior work on real images, by evaluating on the challenging semantic shift benchmark, SSB. We substantially improve state-of-the-art on this evaluation. In summary, we make the following key contributions. 1. We propose a new benchmark dataset, CLEVR4, for GCD. CLEVR4 contains four independent categories and can be used to better study the category discovery problem. 2. We use CLEVR4 to garner insights on the biases of large pre-trained models as well as the weaknesses of existing category discovery methods. We demonstrate that even very strong unsupervised models fail on this toy benchmark. 3. We present a novel method for GCD, mean GCD, inspired by the mean teacher algorithm. 4. 
we show mean GCD outperforms baselines on CLEVR4, and further sets a new state of the art on the challenging semantic shift benchmark. Section Summary Developing algorithms for image recognition that can automatically construct complex visual taxonomies from data is a challenging task. In this paper, we introduce the generalized category discovery, GCD, problem and propose a new benchmark dataset called CLEVR4, which contains four independent taxonomies. We also present a novel method called MuGCD, inspired by the mean teacher algorithm, which outperforms existing approaches on CLEVR4 and sets a new state of the art on the semantic shift benchmark. Section. Related work. Let's delve into the related work and the new developments we've made in the field of category discovery. Initially, the concept of novel category discovery, NCD, was introduced, which is different from generalized category discovery, GCD. In NCD, the unlabeled images are known to come from a different set of categories than the labeled ones. This is unlike unsupervised clustering, which groups unlabeled data without any reference to labels. It's also different from semi-supervised learning, where unlabeled images come from the same set of categories as the labeled data. GCD, on the other hand, is a more challenging task where assumptions about the classes in the unlabeled data are largely removed. This means that images in the unlabeled data could belong to the labeled classes or to entirely new ones. We want to highlight a concurrent work in SIM GCD, which currently shows the best performance on standard GCD benchmarks. Our method differs from SIM GCD in that we use a mean teacher to provide more stable pseudo labels during training, and we pay careful attention to model initialization and data augmentations. To better study this problem, we've introduced CLEVR4, a synthetic benchmark that contains four equally valid groupings of the data. CLEVR4 extends the CLEVR dataset, using Blender to render images of multiple objects and place them in a static scene. This is ideal for category discovery, as each object attribute defines a different taxonomy for the data, such as object shape, color, and so on. The original dataset was limited as it only contained three shapes and two textures, which made the clustering tasks less challenging. To address this, we've added two new colors, seven new shapes, and eight new textures to the dataset, and placed between one and ten objects in each scene. Each image is therefore characterized by object shape, texture, color, and count. The value for each attribute is sampled uniformly and independently from the others meaning the image label with respect to one taxonomy gives us no information about the label with respect to another. This sets CLEVR4 apart from existing GCD benchmarks such as CIFAR100 and FGVC aircraft. These datasets only contain taxonomies at different granularities, and as such the taxonomies are highly correlated with each other. Furthermore, the number of categories provides no information regarding the specified taxonomy as all CLEVR4 taxonomies contain 10 object categories. We've created GCD splits for each taxonomy in CLEVR4, reserving half the categories for the labeled set, and half for the unlabeled set. We further subsample 50% of the images from the labeled categories and add them to the unlabeled set. We've synthesized 8.4 thousand images for GCD development, and made a larger 100 thousand image dataset available. For performance metrics, we follow standard practice and report clustering accuracy for evaluation. This is calculated by comparing the predicted labels with the ground truth labels. For GCD models, we also report accuracy on subsets belonging to old and new classes. The most important metric is the overall clustering performance, as the precise old and new figures are subject to the assignments selected in the matching process. In the following sections, we use CLEVR4 to gather insights into the category discovery problem. We assess the limitations of large-scale pre-training for the problem, before using CLEVR4 to examine the weaknesses of existing category discovery methods. Next, we use our findings to motivate a stronger method for GCD, finding that this substantially outperforms implemented baselines on CLEVR4. Section Summary the section discusses the concept of novel category discovery, NCD, and its differences from other related tasks such as unsupervised clustering and semi-supervised learning. It also introduces CLEVR4, a synthetic benchmark dataset specifically designed for category discovery, which contains multiple object attributes that define different taxonomies for the data. 
The section further explains the performance metrics used for evaluating category discovery models and highlights the insights gained from using CLEVR4 to examine the limitations of existing methods and motivate a stronger approach for GCD. Section. Limitations of large-scale pre-training for category discovery. We're going to discuss the limitations of large-scale pre-training for category discovery. We've found that pre-trained models can develop certain biases that limit their effectiveness when used directly or as a starting point for category discovery. Many category discovery methods use self-supervised representation learning as a starting point, hoping to improve performance by leveraging large-scale pre-training. However, these representations can be biased. We've looked into how these biases affect SIMGCD, a leading method in generalized category discovery. SIMGCD has two main components, a contrastive loss on backbone features, which uses self-supervised info NCE on all data and supervised contrastive learning on images with labels available, and a contrastive loss to train a classification head, where different views of the same image provide pseudo-labels for each other. We compared SIMGCD initialized with a lightweight ResNet 18 trained from scratch, a VIT-B-16 pre-trained with masked autoencoding, and a VIT-B-14 with DINOV2 initialization. For each initialization, we adjusted learning rates and data augmentations. Surprisingly, we found inconsistent benefits from using large-scale pre-training on CLEVR4. For example, on the count taxonomy, pre-training resulted in significantly worse performance than training a lightweight ResNet 18 from scratch. On average, SIMGCD with a randomly initialized ResNet 18 performed best. We found that the final category discovery model often inherits biases from the pre-training and can struggle to overcome them even after fine-tuning. Our results emphasize the importance of carefully choosing the initialization for a given GCD task and suggest that CLEVR4 could be useful for this purpose. Next, we analyzed SIMGCD, the current best method for the GCD task. We found that on CLEVR4, it's not always better than the GCD baseline it extends. We identified the problem in the generation of the pseudo-labels for the discovered categories. The GCD baseline uses only one of the two losses used by SIMGCD, performing contrastive learning on features, followed by simple clustering in the model's embedding space. To compare SIMGCD and GCD, we started with a ResNet 18 feature extractor, training it from scratch to avoid potential biases. We found that both methods perform significantly worse on texture and count than on shape and color. On the more challenging texture and count splits, the GCD baseline actually outperformed the SIMGCD state-of-the-art. This suggests that training classifier and feature space losses together can hurt performance. Upon closer inspection, we found that the main performance gap on texture and count comes from accuracy on the new categories. Both methods cluster the old categories almost perfectly. This suggests that the new class pseudo labels from SIMGCD are not strong enough. GCD, with no supervision for novel classes, achieves higher clustering performance. Given these findings, we sought to improve the quality of the pseudo labels for new categories. We drew inspiration from the mean teacher setup for semi supervised learning, which has been adapted with minor changes in many self supervised frameworks. In this setup, a student network is supervised by class pseudo-labels generated by a teacher. The teacher is an identical architecture with parameters updated with the exponential moving average, emma, of the student. The idea is that the slowly updated teacher is more robust to the noisy supervision from pseudo-labels, which in turn improves the quality of the pseudo-labels themselves. We also decided to train the backbone only with the GCD baseline loss, before fine-tuning with the classification head and loss. These changes, along with careful consideration of the data augmentations, led to our proposed mean GCD, micro GCD, algorithm. Overall, micro GCD outperforms SIM GCD on three of the four CLEVR4 taxonomies, and further outperforms SIM GCD by nearly 5% on average across all splits. Micro GCD underperforms SIM GCD on the shape split of CLEVR4, and we analyze this failure case later. Section Summary. Large-scale pre-training for category discovery has limitations due to the development of biases in pre-trained representations, which hinder their performance. The state-of-the-art method, SIMGCD, 
also faces challenges in pseudo-label generation for discovered categories, resulting in inconsistent gains from leveraging pre-training. To address these limitations, a new algorithm called MuGCD is proposed, which improves the quality of pseudo-labels and achieves better performance than SimGCD on CLEVR4. Section. The GCD algorithm. In this section, we'll delve into a robust yet straightforward method for greatest common divisor, GCD, which we refer to as MuGCD. This method, which we've previously discussed and illustrated, follows a two-step process. Initially, it learns the representation in the same way as the standard GCD method. Then, we add a classification component and fine-tune the model using a mean teacher setup, which is similar to SimGCD but provides more stable pseudo-labels. To put it simply, we build models, denoted as F underscore theta, by combining a feature extractor, phi, and a classification head, G. We first train, phi, using the representation learning framework, and the combined model gives, F equals G composed with phi. This model produces values in a set of real numbers to the power of, K, where, K, is the total number of categories in the dataset. Next, we select a batch of images, B, and create two random augmentations for each image. One view is passed through the student network, F underscore theta underscore S, and the other through the teacher network, F underscore theta underscore T. Here, theta underscore S, and theta underscore T, represent the network parameters of the student and teacher, respectively. We then calculate the cross-entropy loss between the teacher's pseudo-labels and the student's predictions. These pseudo-labels and predictions are the softmax outputs of the student and teacher networks, scaled with a temperature factor, tau underscore asterisk. We also use labeled instances in the batch with a supervised cross-entropy component. Here, B underscore L is the labeled subset of the batch, and Y, X, is the one hot class label of the example, X. Additionally, we include a mean entropy maximization regularizer to encourage pseudo-labels for all categories. The student is trained with respect to the total loss, given hyperparameters, lambda underscore 1, and lambda underscore 2. The teacher parameters are updated as the moving average, where omega, t, is a time-varying momentum. For the architecture, we use a cosine classifier, as g, which uses L2 normalized weight vectors and feature representations. We found that normalized vectors are crucial to prevent the predictions from collapsing to the labeled categories. We tested MuGCD against previous work on the standard semantic shift benchmark SSB suite, which includes three fine-grained evaluations, CUB, Stanford CARS, and FGVC aircraft. Although the SSB datasets do not contain independent clusters of the same images, they do have well-defined taxonomies, such as birds, cars, and aircrafts. The SSB also contains curated novel class splits which control for semantic distance with the labeled set. We found that coarse-grained GCD benchmarks do not specify clear taxonomies in the labeled set, and we include a long-tailed evaluation on Herbarium 19. Regarding model initialization and compared methods, the SSB contains fine-grained, object-centric datasets, which have been shown to benefit from greater shape bias. Previous GCD methods initialize with Dino pre-training, which we found had the strongest shape bias among self-supervised models. However, the recent DINOV2 demonstrates a substantially greater shape bias. As such, we train our model both with DINO and DINOV2 initialization, further re-implementing GCD baselines and SimGCD with DINOV2 for comparison. We implemented all models in PyTorch on a single NVIDIA P40 or M40. Most models are trained with an initial learning rate of 0.1 which is decayed with a cosine annealed schedule. For our exponential moving average, EMMA, schedule, we ramp it up throughout training with a cosine function. However, we found a much lower initial decay to be beneficial. We ramp up the decay from a base of 0.7 to a final value of 0.999 during training. Further implementation details can be found in the supplementary implementation details section. Section summary. In this section, the authors introduce a method called MuGCD for the GCD problem. The algorithm combines a feature extractor and a classification head, and uses a mean teacher setup to fine-tune the model with more robust pseudo-labels. They also adopt a cosine classifier to prevent collapse of predictions to labeled categories. 
The method is evaluated on the Semantic Shift Benchmark, SSB, suite, including fine-grained evaluations and a long-tailed evaluation on Herbarium 19. The models are initialized with Dino or DINOV2 pre-training and trained using PyTorch with specific implementation details. Section. Discussion. In our discussion, we found that our method, which we'll call MuGCD, performs better than the current best method, SimGCD, by over 2% on average across all shape-biased single-object benchmarks, SSB, when we use Dino initialization. When we use a stronger backbone, DINOV2, the performance of the simple K means baseline nearly doubles in accuracy. This supports our decision to use shape-biased initialization on this object-centric evaluation. The gap between the GCD baseline and the SIM GCD state-of-the-art is also reduced from over 10% to under 5% on average. However, our method still outperforms SIM GCD by over 3% on average, as well as on each dataset individually, setting a new state-of-the-art. We also conducted a series of tests to understand the impact of our main design choices. The first test shows the importance of pre-training with the GCD baseline loss. The second test demonstrates that stronger augmentation for the student network is critical, with a 7% drop in CUB performance without it. Tests 3 to 5 highlight the importance of a carefully designed exponential moving average EMA, schedule. Our use of a time-varying decay outperforms constant decay values. This makes sense because early on in training, with a randomly initialized classification head, we want the teacher to be updated quickly. Later on in training, slow teacher updates mitigate the effect of noisy pseudo-labels within any given batch. Furthermore, in tests 6 and 7, we validate the importance of entropy regularization and cosine classifiers in category discovery. We also sought to understand the performance gains yielded by cosine classifiers. Cosine classifiers with entropy regularization have been widely adopted in recognition settings with limited supervision, including in category discovery. We provide justifications for this by inspecting the norms of the learned vectors in the final classification layer. Specifically, consider a classifier, without a bias term, as g equals w in r to the power of d times k, containing k vectors of d dimension, one for each output category. In our full method, with normalized classifiers, the norm of all vectors is enforced to be the unit norm. If we remove this constraint, we can see that the norms of vectors which are not supervised by ground truth labels fall substantially. Then, if we further remove the entropy regularization term, the magnitudes of the old class vectors increases dramatically. This becomes an issue at inference time, with per class log it's computed as, with the class prediction returned as the maximum value of L underscore M. In other words, we show that without appropriate regularization, our GCD models trivially reduce the weight norm of new class vectors, leaving all images to be assigned to one of the old classes. Finally, we performed analysis on the count split of CLEVR4. Uniquely amongst the four taxonomies, the count categories have a clear order. We plot the first two principal components of the normalized features of the GCD baseline, SIMGCD and MUGCD. It is clear that all feature spaces learn a clear number sense, with image features placed in order of increasing object count. Strikingly, this sense of numerosity is present even beyond the supervised categories, count greater than 5, as a byproduct of a simple recognition task. Furthermore, while the baseline learns elliptical clusters for each category, SimGCD and MuGCD project all images onto a one-dimensional object in feature space. This object can be considered as a semantic axis, a low-dimensional manifold in feature space, R in R to the power of D, along which the category label changes.